you know, like they're proud to hold um, a stock instead of selling for gains or minimizing their losses. It's mm. it's kind of head scratching because you think, well, is it really? I think I honestly believe that for some people, and I'm guilty of this myself to some extent. I try to limit my, you know, my lottery tickets as much as possible because I know that's not how I make money, uh, or at least you know, recently that's not how I made money at all. Um, well, more on that some other day. <laughs> but the way that I see is, okay, what I like to buy, what has been working for me is to pick a commodity that has been down for years, um, see which companies are just holding on to projects that are not in the money yet, buy them, and wait. You know, like, I am good at waiting. I can wait for a long time because it takes no skill. And so I, I know that I can make money that way. So when something comes up that's all hot and sexy all of a sudden, I'm like, huh, what if this is the next, you know, big thing? I mean, <laughs> it's no coincidence. My, my channel is the next big rush. And I'm like, okay, so if I were to lose this money, it, would it be okay? Uh, but then you go into those rooms, uh, into those chat rooms, and it's so interesting. You can learn so much because you can follow the conversation day to day um, and, and just see, you know, are people there just for the bragging rights of saying, I, you know, I held on to the stock, which was a major discovery, yada, yada, yada. I mean, at the end of the day, your grandchildren are not going to care if you took part in in, you know, a, dis a nickel discovery of the century. Like, who cares? It's just like, okay, how much money did you make and is, is there anything left for me? <laughs> so really, <laughs> that, that is going to be your legacy. The numbers are going to be your legacy. Well, I guess, you know, the, how, how you take care of it is, is your legacy more than the numbers itself. But it's funny how, like, I try to catch myself, okay, like, Am I getting into that, you know, herd mentality of you're with us or against us? Because it's so easy to, to be yes. not. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so easy. Uh, oh, that's but. awesome, Fabi. I think the the, psych, the investor psychology is more than, I think it's, personally, I think it's more than half the battle. And mm -hmm. um, what you said there, I think that just hits home on that point is, like, like, like you, you know, I'm more of the macro approach. Like if I think uranium or gold or nickel or, you know, what have you commodity is going to do well. I just want to be in that commodity as we learned from gold in 2016, early 2016, mm -hmm. uh, rising tide will lift all boats. At that point, everybody will feel like a genius. It doesn't matter really what you own, right? Mm -hmm. um, during those, you know, runs up, you, you start to kind of realize like how trivial a lot of the stuff really is that we're kind of scrutinizing. Um, you know, like right now when it's a total buyer's market, you can scrutinize every company all day and night long. But yeah. if the if the macro tide uh, shifts in your favor, then all of this is in a way immaterial because you're just going to ride the wave and it's, it's going to be a, mm -hmm. you know, like it's going to be a thrill ride. So, yeah, you know, and the, it's that's really the thing easy. That, it's lazy. Like you yeah, almost yeah. don't need like to be completely honest. I think if you look back in the gold you know, sector, how much research was involved in just spreading a bunch of money around everybody or anybody in, you know, prior to 2016, you would have made money either way. Like, unless yes. you put all of your eggs into like Rubicon or something silly like that. Yes. But if you spread it the money out and, you know, the story for the sector is good, then it's okay. You're going to make money. <laughs> Yes, uh, unfortunately, in the heat of the moment, it, it never feels that way. You you feel like yeah. you know it's kind of life or death if you pick this stock versus that stock, um, which usually doesn't turn out to be true in the macro sense. So, you know, like you, I, I have a bunch of stocks where I just I, I just it's kind of buy right, sit tight, wait it out for the the macro trend to agree with you. Um, but I also like some of these lottery tickets as well for myself. I don't really like too much exposure, so. Um, you know, most recently I limited myself to kind of the the Wits 2.0 story and GGI, so that was kind of the extent of it. But mm -hmm. having said that, I, I'm always kind of cognizant in my mind like these are not buy and hold forever stories. I don't need to ride this to the end of time. I just need to make my money when that comes. I'm going to detach myself because, like you said, at the end of the day, it's about making money, and you know, it's it's I, I don't see that much appeal and I don't need the bragging rights to, to write a story till the end. So I don't, um, 
you know, if I look at things and I try to look at it objectively and I see that the risks out, outweigh the reward, then I'm content with just um, getting out completely. And I, I try not to fall in love with these stories because I, I think that's um, when you set yourself up to kind of be blindsided and, you know, surprised. And, um, you know, I, I'm just trying to avoid risk in, the, in, the, in that regard. You know, if I can make money off a high flyer, then I would be... I mean, nothing would be better for me than to just take those profits and parlay it into another, you know, stock like, you know, more like the stuff that Nick focuses on, which is obscure, under the radar. Nobody cares about it. There's, mm-hmm. you know, less than five people in the forums. I mean, that's <laughs> that's 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 ideal for me personally. Like, I, I just don't care enough about any individual story to love it that much. Where, and, and what Nick said about not selling a single share, I I think that's very destructive um, because. Mining is, is a tough business. The odds are always stacked against you. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. What can go wrong will go wrong. So I just can't understand, especially if you have an outsized position. And with GGI, you're hearing people who have six or seven figures invested in this one stock. Mm-hmm. They wrote it all the way That's up past silly. $5. And you know then it crashed all the way back down. But they said, I'm, I haven't sold a single share and I will not s- sell a single share. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I think, you know, really at the end of the day, it's more for bragging rights because you want to say you held on till the end where it got taken out um, and this became Norils 2.0. And that's just like the ideal fantasy situation. But <laughs> I mean, it's possible, but I just yep. think the odds are, are unlikely. So uh, de-risking is, I think, always important. And I've tried to do that with pretty much every stock that I own. So I, I don't um, ever get sucked into the vortex to that extent. I, I would like to believe and I, I hope that will always be the case. Uh, I'll add just something, a uh, side note, mostly related to what we were just talking about. But uh, I actually, I have a teaser because, you know, through all of this, this is, this is totally related to me mostly lurking. Like I do have a stock that I've bought a ton of and I haven't told a single soul. Actually, the only person I talked to about it is my broker, Sam. And I have something in the works very likely by next week from when this is being recorded. So I don't know when this segment's going to come out. But anyone who's listening should can check my you know, channel in a week or two. We're, we're, we're right at the uh, end of November, beginning of December. And I, I, I'm not sharing it with anyone, but it's the perfect example of what I like to find. And I have to say, I get a lot of satisfaction out of not not necessarily being the person to like you know come up with the idea, but being very early and and figuring out that this is something I should bet large on. You know the whole position sizing thing because because that's part of it too. Is like do you do you bet way too much or way too little? And I feel with this particular stock, I, I have a lot to say in my video that's coming out about why I decided to you know bet the way I did. Um, at this time with all the other opportunities out there and about risk reward. And I really am looking for, you know, not, not necessarily hundred baggers, but for, you know, five or 10 baggers within a relatively short period of time. I, I have some stocks that I hold on to longer. I think, I think for me, you know, mod resources and Xanadu mines, which I, which I own both of, like those are ones I'm comfortable holding for a, a few years or, or maybe more, even though they are relatively exciting uh, you know, more still in the explore, exploration development hybrid type stories. But the ones that I get really excited about are the ones more like Apollo, where I can buy cheaply, no one's talking about it. And you can have that big return within a few months based on drill results, even if there's not that much hype, like knowing you could be there early. And I, and I want to add that most of my best plays have been ones where sometimes I knew about the stock and I felt negatively about it at first. And it was on my radar, but like it wasn't working. But then somehow I turn around on it. And, you know, that happened with Orca, this Orca Gold happened with Apollo Resources. It's happened with a few others. But I really feel that, you know, it should be hard. It should you should have to put research to really get those big gains for the plays that are short term. Now, that doesn't mean I mean other people make a ton of money when it's not really hard or maybe for them, the, the, the quote unquote hard aspect is to buy something that's momentum driven and actually hold on to it as it's moving up. That doesn't work for me. What works for me in terms of being hard is like, you know, it's something that I have to put in a lot of extra research, a lot of extra thinking time to decide that this opportunity is the best place to put my money, you know, knowing that there's opportunity costs, that there's something else I could throw that money in and deciding, you know, for the, for the next, you know, three to six months, I actually could have a multi-bagger by betting big on this. 
And, and I just wanted to emphasize that because I, I rarely even think about commodity prices these days. I mostly think about exploration potential, and I just happen to be really deep into gold and copper plays, and I try to ignore a lot of the other stuff out there. I, I do like you know following Garibaldi and Novo, but those are immediately, you know, those types of plays are off my radar because everyone's talking about them. So mm-hmm. I just want to emphasize like that's that's kind of my semi unique way of doing it. And I can't do it on my own. You know, like I get a lot of help from my broker and from talking to other people, but that's um, you know, that's what works for me. And you know, that's that's just an important point. Everybody got to figure their figure out their own strengths and weaknesses, and there's nothing wrong with you know, avoiding the hype plays. And there's also nothing wrong with taking advantage of the hype plays if that's what works for you. Yeah. I, it, it's funny you say that because that's what you're really good at, Nick. Like you're excellent at, fi- at finding the, these little plays that n- nobody's really talking about and then bringing them <laughs> to light. Like if I were to do that, I'd be completely lost. Like I, I don't think I, I would, you know, I would be able to pull it off nearly as well as you do. Uh, but that's just the thing is finding out uh, what what has worked in the past for you and, and what you enjoy doing as well. Like it's bizarre how sometimes the stocks that I research the most are the ones that I never buy. And then mm. there are stocks that I'm like, okay, I like this, this and this. Boom. And I go and buy it almost like a compulsively like I, <laughs> I need to have this the stock. This is what I want. It's cheap enough. I like the story. Boom. Uh, but it's it's just bizarre how that works. But, you know, sometimes it, it works um, according to your to your game plan. I mm-hmm. am not leaving until you tell us what that stock is, Nick. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. No, I'm oh. joking. I'm joking. You, okay. you can tell us later. We might be, I like we might be here for a while. Mystery. Yeah. I like the mystery. Uh, and I'll be on the lookout for that video as well as you publish it. <laughs> 